What are the steps to buying a house? All right, today's hot take is a little bit different because I was sent an article and I just, I have to refute what it says. And so I'm gonna give y'all the real inside information from an actual realtor who's been doing this for decades and who's bought and sold a lot of houses myself. And so this article said that when you're buying your first house, the first thing you do is your research. That is not the first thing you do. You don't even know what you're looking for. And so you could start scouring websites. Good Lord, you might wind up on Reddit or Tumblr, and then you'll never wind up buying a house because you might get tangled up in somebody else's personal issues. So let's start with the second one, which is kind of in the right vein. The second item they recommended was budget for your house. I would say slow your roll on that and create a household budget first. I will tell any first time buyer this, you need to know your numbers before you start shopping for a house. And that means inflows and outflows. You are not the federal government. The federal government does not seem to have any kind of a budget at all, but you as a personal person need to have one. You need to know what your income looks like, what your tax liabilities are, and then you need to know where your money is going. It's hard to budget for home buying if you don't yet have a handle on where the money is leaving your accounts. This is so important. You can use a website to do it. You can use an old check register to do it if you're old school. You can use a spreadsheet, but it is wildly important to understand where your leaks are because once you decide to buy a house, you're gonna have to solve a lot of those budget leaks. That means you might have to turn off Hulu or Netflix or Paramount or HBO Max or whatever your streaming sites are so that you can make sure you have the dollars for things like maintenance on a house and to make sure that you've got a budget for painting and for repairing a window should it break. Those are really important. Now, after you've established your current budget situation, now you're gonna have a handle on how much of your money is currently going out in the way of housing. If you're renting, you're gonna look at that rent payment and now you wanna budget for a house. Well, the house payment might be the same or different than your rent payment. It's not always gonna be dollar for dollar. In some markets, including where I am in North Carolina in Cabarrus County, for many of my clients who are currently paying rent, I can get them into a home ownership situation for a lower payment as long as their desires aren't out of control. But that also means when you're looking at that housing line item, the house that you buy is gonna include things like maintenance. You're gonna to have to think about having an emergency fund of six months just in case your water heater goes because you wanna take a shower and frankly, we all want you to. And maybe your air conditioner's gonna go and you did not or purchase the home warranty or you didn't keep it up. There's lots of things you wanna pay attention to on those fronts. Now, one thing you should know is that you may have a rent payment right now and you're also paying for renter's insurance once you buy a home, your homeowner's insurance is gonna be factored into your payment, and that's a really good thing. So you start looking at the peas and carrots and figuring out where they line up, which means that as you're starting to transition those numbers over, the next thing you do is not number three, which says to check your credit score. No, find your realtor next. And here's why you want your realtor next. We are gonna help you figure out this plan. And if you go pulling your credit on some random website, that might actually not be helpful to you because in credit score world, there are soft pulls and there are hard pulls. And your realtor is going to be the one to say to you, let's make sure that we're pulling correctly at the right time with the right people so that you don't start knocking points off your credit score because every time it gets checked, you could lose points. And I don't want to see that because you might be a buyer that's right on the cusp of the best possible rate situation. And if you get the credit check done too early with the wrong party, you can actually knock yourself out of contention. So we're actually gonna reorder that and say, after you've looked at your numbers, we're gonna go get a realtor, which they had this way down here at number six. That's crazy. All right, so here's how you hire a real estate agent. You don't just hire your brother-in-law because he got a license. I, I'm sure he's a lovely individual, but if he does not know how to guide you in the process, he might actually not help you that much because a secret about real estate, one of the most important things to know about real estate, I'm gonna say it one more time, this is a huge secret. You don't make money when you sell a house. You make money when you buy the house. So when you're hiring that real estate agent, you want somebody that understands the buy side in the market that you're in. If you are buying a property in the Bay Area of California, you need somebody who understands what's happening with market trends so that you don't overpay. If you are buying a house here in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina market where numbers are going up, 
You need somebody that can help you win a multiple offer situation. There's different market conditions demand different expertise. Now, the number of years in the business is not as important as the expertise they have. And I, I don't mean this to sound ugly, so please don't get too mad, but somebody who does one transaction a year is very unlikely to be an expert in the marketplace because they have not built the muscle up. Now, somebody who's doing 12 or 20 is going to have enough expertise that they're doing the process over and over. Somebody doing 500, you may or may not get to them. That's going to be a team environment. And so then you have to ask yourself, how much personal interaction do I want with my realtor? How many questions do I have? Do I text 57 times a day or one time a day? Know your own communication needs as you interview agents. So you want to know their expertise in the market, which would mean the frequency of transactions and Frankly, you should also ask them if they've bought recently because you should know if their expertise is from 30 years ago or if it's from today. And granted, the 30 year ago person might be the best option for you, but you've got to ask good questions because things do move and things do change. Now, for example, if you call me, you probably are gonna get me plus one of my agents because I do spend a lot of time training and traveling and volunteering. But when you do that, you get two for the price of one. And so we're gonna make sure that we are a match for what your needs are and that you have access to all of our expertise different strokes for different folks. That's one of the beauties of real estate being a wildly competitive market. There's truly an agent everywhere and they all have different business models and different ways of conducting business. So you, the consumer, should know you get to pick. Now, what if your best friend from high school is a real estate pro and you really don't want to mix business and pleasure? Then you should say right out loud, I love you, you're awesome. I don't want to mix my personal life and my business life and they might get mad and cut you off forever because that's the world we're in right now. But I personally value when somebody is that honest with me because I would so much rather preserve a personal relationship instead of trying to grab every transaction possible. But again, that's up to you, the consumer, you got to pick. Now, if you're buying for the very, very first time, which also applies to those of y'all that last bought 10 years ago because market conditions change, and frankly, this is such an infrequent purchase, that you're gonna feel like a first timer every time, you should make sure you're asking if somebody's gonna be able to update you on the process. Are they gonna explain the process to you? Because one thing we do know about buyers in today's market, they value transparency and knowledge. And if somebody's just doing everything for you and not explaining, that can make the process even more painful because you don't really know what's going on or what happens next. So as you hire that pro, you should know a little bit about your own financial situation. That's why you set your budgets up early, right? So now that you know ish what your spending capabilities are and ish where your questions are, hire the pro that will look at that with you and answer your questions and make sure that you've got a good plan. And I should also point out here, you can interview more than one agent. You don't have to use the first one that you meet. You might have met somebody at an open house and now they've sent you houses by email because they got way too far ahead of the game. You don't have to use them just because they sent you some emails. You can interview three or four agents and see who you G and haul with, and that's going to change the game forever. Another thing this agent does, which is why it shouldn't be number six, that agent is going to know some trusted mortgage and lender partners in the marketplace. Now, if you're playing cash, that's all well and good, and you might not need a lender recommendation, but you will need recommendations on home inspections. And if you want to get a third party appraisal done, which we highly recommend that you get a certified independent appraiser involved, that you get all these things checked out in advance, you may not need the lender, but you're going to need our list of great trusted people in other regards. Now, why do I say you want a trusted local lender? Look, if you go to the internet and go to some website, you just Google, get approved for a mortgage, you're going to get some websites that come up, you click and you start filling in the blanks and boom, 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 it says, sure, you can spend all this money they're probably not disclosing the fee situation and you've got to be prepared for fees on your mortgage. They're probably not talking about the payment in terms of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And there's a video here I want you to watch about how payments work. I want you to talk to a local lender because I know they're going to give you an educational process and the people on my list, I know how great they are at education and follow-up and it matters so much, particularly when you're spending this kind of money it is a huge financial investment. It is a huge emotional investment and it is infrequent. So you need somebody that's going to guide you in the money process. And by the way, 
I have really bony elbows. I, as a realtor, want somebody I can elbow and say, help my guy out here, help this girl answer some questions, or we have a hiccup in the process and your boss didn't call back with the verification of employment. A local lender I can get a hold of during hours, after hours. If you get pre-approved with some random on the internet that's four time zones away, they don't know me. They don't have a reason to follow up with me as the pro. They don't have a really good vested interest at taking care of you, frankly, because they're not going to run into you at the ball field, the grocery store. And I like to know that my lenders are going to have to interact in life with you, which frankly is a good accountability measure. So we're reordering those items. And now that we've had your realtor hook you up with a lender, now it talks about saving money for down payment. This is something you talk about with your lender partner. For some reason, the myth of needing 20% down persists all over the place. And you should know that depending on your scenario, you may or may not need 20% down. If you are a doctor, which includes chiropractors and veterinarians, you may have access to 100% loan programs. Now, why is that? It's because these folks go through this much time in school and they may need a moment to get established in a marketplace, but every marketplace needs medical professionals, vets, and chiropractors. So you're gonna see special loans for that crowd. So before you start worrying about your down payment, you're gonna to talk to your realtor and your lender about the options that fit you. Maybe you're a first responder, a police, an EMT, fire. There may be special down payment programs for your line of work. Teachers, we often have special loan programs for teachers. There are all these different programs out there, not to even mention the ones that are based on your income and you may have good access to down payment assistance programs. So before you start saving, you should know what your goal is. And if you don't need 20% down, I'm the first one to say that if you have it, that's great. But let's look at what your liquidity is after you put 20% down, because I want you to have some money available, my goodness. And then, it, then your credit score, your lender should be looking at the credit score with you. And if you need 20 points, your good lender is going to help you get there. Another reason to talk about your realtor's favorite lenders. We all pick people that we know are going to provide that advice and not charge for it. And then let's see what else is it says. Go shopping now. Okay, I agree with that. We go shopping after we have a realtor, after we've figured out the monetary side of things, after you've got your budget comfortable, after your credit score is ready to roll, after you have a lender, all those things are done. You never, ever, ever want to go look until they're all done because you may fall in love with something you can't have. It's like trying to date somebody that's married. You're, you're out of order, so make sure there's no ring. And then you'll make an offer on the house. Your real estate pro should have walked through with you how the offer works prior to going shopping. So let's make sure that there's an education on the offer process before you go shopping so that if you fall in love, you can actually win. And then it says finalize your mortgage and then get a home inspection. Out of whack, out of whack. There are going to be some simultaneous processes. So let's say you found this cute little old house, you just love it, and you have signed the paperwork and the seller has signed. Now you have gone from offer to contract. And now your loan is going to kick into high gear. So our local lender is going to get the processors and closers involved to get you across the finish line. While they're chasing that, your realtor team on this side is going to be scheduling home inspection surveys and making sure that we're doing the due diligence on the property that involves licensed third parties that have a set of eyes. And then it says, go get your house appraised. All right, so you should know there's some videos to watch about this. Some banks are gonna ask you to do an online desktop appraisal as your pro, as your realtor. I don't recommend that. I like an independent certified licensed appraiser going into the house who can use the sniff test and the eyeball test down the street to make sure you're getting a fair independent third-party valuation and spoiler alert, the lender's gonna charge the same for either kind. So you as a consumer should know you can ask for an in-person appraisal and this one doesn't have any of that advice in this column, which tells me they're not really paying attention to the up-to-the-minute changes happening in the world. Your realtor should know the up-to-the-minute changes happening. And then it says, get homeowner's insurance. This is one of those simultaneous things that's happening while the lender is getting your information together for the loan, while your realtor is helping you with inspections and such you should be shopping your homeowner's insurance and you always start with the company that has your auto lines because most of them have multi-line discounts. You should also know that in some markets, there are going to be insurance agents that are going to be on top of their A-game. 
For example, if you're in California, State Farm is not writing homeowners in California right now, a huge problem. Your real estate pro will absolutely know what the resources are for homeowners insurance. That's one of our jobs. And by the way, a California realtor is going to know because that's their marketplace. I'm in North Carolina, I only know what I see in the news. But I know that if I'm dealing with a coastal property, I better be looking at flood insurance and whether or not it's a rebuildable situation. Same thing in Florida where when they go through hurricane season, there could be some gaps in insurance. Your local real estate pro is going to know these things, so you're not always just on your own. And that's just my momentary takedown of this article, but I hope that it helps and I hope that you will remember this. Whenever you see an article purporting to tell you the right way to do things, Put your reading glasses on and your critical thinking and make sure that what you are actually looking at is the best thing for you. Now, there's lots of links over here to some additional information and drill downs into some of these. Go have at it. And if you have questions about this article or anything else that you read, and by the way, I did not link them here. They don't need the clickbait. Just drop me a comment and I'll answer for you from the experience of somebody who knows.